Hi, everybody. Welcome to another session of Partner Perspectives with SolarWinds. Uh, I'm Colin Knox, Head of Community Engagement here at SolarWinds MSP. Uh, today, I'm joined by David Powell. He's the CRO, Chief Revenue Officer at Corsica Technologies. Uh, he's in charge of sales, marketing, customer experience, and overall go-to-market strategy there, and formerly was the GM of the Solution Provider Business Unit at Logic Manager. So welcome to the show, Dave. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, pleasure to have you. So we're reaching out. I need out a haircut, Colin. I want to go on a state that haircuts are not allowed <laughs> in the state right now. So apologize for the haircut. We all do. It's just you start adding more and more hair product to make it seem <laughs> Just a little more. A little more. <laughs> um, so we've been reaching out to a bunch of partners and, and just trying to get an understanding at varying degrees of, of sizes and geographies and stuff. But, you know, for Corsica, with with COVID-19, what's what's been different and what's different now about your business today? Yeah, I think that, you know, we've really tried to focus on empathy for our clients during this time. I mean, you know, there was there's a lot of uncertainty. Everyone's working from their houses. So, um, you know, how do we extend empathy to them and understand that no one planned this? You know, this wasn't look, I mean, let's get it right. We all had those clients that like, oh, by the way, we need to turn up a new location like tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah. This wasn't that, right? Is that we were all kind of thrust into this. Um, so we want to have empathy for our clients in the situation they're in. We, had, we want to have empathy for our own employees, right? Is that they're, we were not a fully remote office. Um, we have a few remote employees like myself and a few others, but everyone else is in an office. And so now they're thrust into home environments and how do we make them, um, you know, successful and productive and accountable, but also not overworked and kind of a stressful time when now you've got kids that used to be in school that are home and all that kind of stuff. And then we really kind of wanted to focus on how can we help, right? Is that, let's be honest, I mean, nobody's probably undertaking a huge new project during this time. So how do we kind of pivot away from, you know, our sales motion or whatever that is towards helping? And, you know, a great example of that is like one of our client success managers um, went through his client list and like who had teams already, right? And he was just calling clients up and saying, hey, do you know how to use teams? I'm like, no. He's like, but you know it could do this? You know it could do this? And he was sharing a screen. And I mean, that seems really simple, but man, that's a, a that demonstrates empathy, that gives them something of value for free, that really helps. So we're just trying to pivot the team towards those types of activities, both to our clients and internally of what does this look like with this new kind of new normal during this period? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And and so when when you guys look at your business and, and you guys are a little bit larger and you've been on a really great growth trajectory and getting involved in some M&A, we keep reading stories about you guys. Um, you know, I'm curious and I think a lot of people are curious just how you see the current situation impacting M&A, mergers and acquisitions. And yeah, overall. I would love to have great answers on that, Colin, but you know, it, there's questions that are hard to answer right now. Like when's the next time that you and your significant other are gonna be able to go to a restaurant or go see a movie, right? We don't know what those things look like. And similarly, we don't know what businesses look like on the other side of this. You know, um, the good news I think for us is that um, state by state is beginning to change where I think there was this idea that we had to treat every location the same as New York City. And we're finding that you know, other states have very different experiences than New York City's have, and tragically, but, you know, so now as we're beginning to look at more of a kind of a state by state, you know, thing, um, that clients that have, um, I mean, MSPs that have clients in states that are staying under lockdown more are going to be a little more at risk and ones whose clients are coming back up because at the core, you know, I think what you're going to see is it's not going to become a P&L problem, right? So MSPs are still going to send their invoices but our clients actually going to pay them, right? And so as that drags on, it's become this cash crunch. So if you just looked at somebody's P&L statement, you could see, oh, well, look, they didn't, they didn't experience a dip at all related to um, COVID-19. But what you are going to see if you dig under the covers a little bit is that they ended up in a really tough cash position or yeah. something like that. So, you know, on the one hand, I think a lot of MSPs, if their clients survive, clearly they survive, right? And so that's a positive um, I think there'll be a lot of opportunity on the backside of this because our clients are going to be, I, I think the idea that everybody just one day picks up and goes back to the office and is hanging in the break room, those days aren't coming. So I think some of these clients are going to begin to try to say, okay, what is this? what does this look like? We need to invest in this thing, this thing, this thing. So I think there will be revenue opportunities for 
MSPs that get on the other side, but I also feel from an M&A standpoint, there'll probably be, you hate to say it this way, but like some MSPs that are, I hate, I don't use the word desperate, but kind of like, hey, you know, we, we were kind of hanging on beforehand and now this has pushed us in a spot that we can't be in. And maybe there'll be an opportunity to do some acquisitions to help some of those MSPs out that are, you know, kind of at the end of the PPP money, at the yeah. end of their cash runway, and are looking for somebody to to help them out. So uh, it, it's it's varied. I think some MSPs are going to get stronger. Um, and one other thing I'd like to point out that I've heard from some other MSPs that I'm friends with the industry is that this embracing of remote work, most MSPs weren't fully remote. A lot of software companies are a lot of remote, but so you're kind of probably more accustomed to that, but a lot of MSPs aren't. And so now that they've embraced that and realized they can still have a successful service delivery model in a remote fashion, what does that do to the service delivery model going forward? And so if there are MSPs that don't make it, is there talent now that could be acquired and it doesn't have to be locally acquired by another MSP, but could be nationally acquired another MSP because you're used to having a distributed service delivery model now. So I think those will be some of the things we'll look for. Well, I think opportunistically, you, you raise a good point there of being able to acquire talent, but at the same time, that also that, that starts to blur the geographic lines that you had for a service delivery kind of region that you were delivering to. So right. um, not not that that was ever a, a stretch for you guys there as you <laughs> spend, spend the United yeah. States. So as the CRO and, and still obviously having growth targets for the business, even if they are adapted or, or maybe right-sized, how are you adapting your sales and marketing activities during during this pandemic? Yeah, so we've, um, you know, our calls to action have become different. Our messaging has become different. Now, one thing that we were trying to do is really carefully, you know, here's what's going on with COVID-19. Here's our response. Those to our existing clients, but then to prospects, it's really kind of pivoted to first, how do you get somebody remote? How do you enable that? And then where our, our messaging really went towards security around what security risk did you just introduce into your enterprise that maybe you hadn't considered before? You know, Colin used to sit over here and everything was locked down, he's behind a firewall, and now he's at home on a computer that his kids have downloaded all sorts of craziness onto. What does that do to the security? Um, profile of the company. So we have had a webinar on that um, that was really well attended. And now we're beginning to pivot our um, messaging towards what does re-entry look like? You know, so we have a blog, it's either out or coming up soon around kind of questions to ask yourself around re-entry. And one of the things, this sounds like opportunistic marketing, and I don't mean for it to be overly opportunistic, but you know, we do a lot of co-managed work, right? To where we're working with clients that have a internal IT team and we're taking components of that. Um, as clients maybe are struggling financially, um, does that introduce more co-managed opportunities? So maybe right. they had a layoff during this and instead of hiring back IT staff, they're looking for outsource. And um, back in 2008, when things were not great, you know, I had a client tell me when at that time, he goes, I have money for outsourcing. I don't have budget for headcount yeah. because headcount immediately, you know, gets looked at, you know, yeah. if it's an expense for outsourcing, well, if we had to, we could cut that a whole lot yeah. easier without having to have a riff. So, uh, you know, we're wanting to message, you know, what does your new environment look like when you come back? Is that a more mobile remote workforce? And then what is the security things that entails? Are there co-managed opportunities to where there's job functions? You used to have performed in-house that now you want to be performed out of house. And then, you know, what does this mean inside the four walls? Um, I was talking to some lawyer friends of mine, not work related, but they were saying, you know, law firms have been kind of slow to adopt maybe the um, co full conference room set up with like a team right. in an old conference room. And he said they're used to getting 20 guys into the conference room. Well, maybe going forward, those 20 people are still in the office but maybe only 10 of them can come to the conference room and the other 10 need to take that same meeting from their desk, you know, 40 yards away. So yeah. there could be things like that, that, you know, come into play where we could enable those types of solutions um, for clients that are back in the office, but that still changes the way that they work. Well, I, I think, you know, that that's a little bit of a model of, of how a lot of MSP should be looking at it. I know I, I, was fortunate. I actually started my MSP in the last recession, and <laughs> we did a lot of that stuff. It was co-managed IT. It was finding, you know, innovative ways to approach capex versus opex and everything else. 
Um, but I think you know we've we've been preaching a lot at, at Solar Winds here, kind of these kind of six stages to working through um, and adapting your business through you know a crisis like this. And and that first half is all about you know securing and supporting and, and taking care of your customers. But that the last half of that is all about strengthening your business, right? And being able to position yourself of, of how are we going to be coming out of this? You know, what do we need to do financially and strategically client facing wise uh, to make sure that we can come out of this even stronger? So um, for those that are, are watching who are maybe still just maybe just entering that strengthening of the business, um, what steps have you guys taken when it comes to preserving revenue with all this? You know, you mentioned already doing a lot of work, but are the customers going to pay the bills when the time yeah. comes due? And that's a big risk point. So so what kind of things have you done to mitigate that? We've been a lot more proactive around um, our accounting team reaching out on invoices and trying to get those paid. Um, we turned on um, some software that allows that, you know, clients to pay via credit card. So, right. we, you know, basically we won't maybe we won't extend you terms, maybe your credit card vendor will. And so then we push that out to all of our clients and we got a lot of uptake that way. And then we had a couple of clients, just a few reach out around like deferment. Can we defer? And we had our marketing team turn up, turn up a landing page for deferment requests where they had to go in and kind of fill out. Yes, we are suspending operations or we're turning down operations or how many users are, you know, not going to be showing up at work and all this kind of stuff. Cause quite frankly, a user that we have to support, whether at their house or at the office is not, turning down operations. It's just changed where they are, right? right. Um, so we created that. We've had three, I think, three clients go through and fill it out. But, you know, a little bit of that is we wanted to understand their situation. We want to we want to help our clients, right? And just blanket deferment doesn't really help us. Um, so we want to understand what's unique about your situation, and then we could respond accordingly. So, you know, that's kind of the way that we've looked at it is we want to be appropriately aggressive on collections and making sure they're paying in a timely way. We wanted to create different opportunities for them to pay us so that if they need float, maybe there's someone else that can offer that for them. And then we also wanted to address if they needed to defer or wanted to defer. Again, we're not removing them from their contractual obligations. We're just deferring yeah. that kind of like forbearance in a mortgage. So we want to create a way to programmatically do that instead of it always being kind of ad hoc. Nice. Great ideas and great advice. So we're we're just about running out of time here. Yeah. But one last thing here is, is overall, what, what guidance do you have for the MSP community kind of at large? Do you have any advice on how they can better prepare their business and customers for the next level of the unknown? Yeah. I think that innovating on your client's behalf is key, right? Is that um, how do you, when they come as an example, just as they come back into the office, they're going to have to figure out a whole bunch of stuff, right? And if you can go and figure it out for them and then give them the answers to the test and help them cheat, shortcut that process, I think that's, that's great. And then also at some point, you know, if something goes bad and then over time people kind of get a little further away from it and they lose enthusiasm about it, but we're going to need to come back and say, Hey, you know what? When, when y'all had to send everybody home from work for lockdown, you, we were able to accomplish it, but it was a little haphazard, right? Can yeah. we create a plan now? Or do we need to think about what mission critical backups look like versus just everything else and all that kind of stuff? And so I think making sure that we're having those conversations around what can we learn and then how do we become a little more agile in our businesses you know, going forward, um, I think those will be the conversations that will help drive things forward on the other side of this. That's awesome. Great advice. Uh, you know, thanks. Thanks for joining me today, yeah. today Dave, having the chat and and uh, spreading some news and advice and perspectives from from your side of the fence. And uh, yeah, thanks for everybody for tuning in. Yep. Happy to help. Y'all have a good one.